The Knicks got some tough news around Mitchell Robinson. The New York Center will have left ankle surgery at the hospital for special surgery and will be reevaluated in eight to ten weeks. So let's talk about what this means for the Knicks going forward. I'm going to do that with the host of Knicks Fan TV, my guy, CP the Franchise, joins me now. CP, how's it going, man? Dexter, gl gloomy Monday here, here in New York uh, in, in the backdrop of, of uh, this Mitchell Robinson news. Uh, truly tough one, tough one for, for him first and foremost and, and for, for the organization. And just want to shout out to him again as a person because he's a guy who typically lets his emotions out on, on social media, oftentimes mm -hmm. on, on the Knicks fan TV social media pages. And last night he did put out almost a cryptic message on Snapchat speaking on a potential setback here so once i read that it seemed like the news today was not going to be so good and as we hear it isn't yeah it isn't good at all right now and you know it's tough because of the way he's been playing this season been playing so well and cp we saw robinson we saw him suffer the ankle injury against the celtics on friday now he's out for at least eight weeks you know you talked about a gloomy day in new york how big of a blow is this for the knicks it's huge. And look, with, with Mitchell Robinson and his injury history, his durability concerns, you can always pencil in some time missed uh, for him in every season. But what eight to ten weeks is big. I mean, you're, you're thinking about February at the earliest. This is a Knicks team. They're 12 and nine right now, already having defensive question marks at the point of attack, at the guard position. And now you're losing your biggest defensive anchor, as well as a, a, a huge offensive weapon in his ability to get the, the Knicks second chance opportunities, the best big man in the league in terms of offensive rebounding. So this is critical for the New York Knicks. They have two games uh, against teams under 500, which they're undefeated against. But then the rest of the games this month in December, 11 games against teams over 500. The Knicks are three and nine against teams over 500. Still looking for a statement win there. And now without their biggest anchor on both ends of the floor, it's going to be a tall order for this team. They're going to have to tread water. You have Isaiah Hartenstein and Jericho Sims waiting in the wings, so they'll need to lean on their depth. Going to have to lean on their depth, and that brings me to the next question here, CP, because you know this. It's always next man up. Isaiah Hartenstein, he's going to step into the role, third string center. You mentioned him, Jericho Sims. He moves up a spot. Do the Knicks have enough at the center spot to compete? over the next two months? And if not, should the team think about making a move to upgrade at the five? For now, they should, but their margin for error is very slim. I love the way Isaiah Hartenstein has played since about the second half of last year up until now, and, and he's fit in quite nicely with this team. He's built some chemistry and, and stability, not just with Mitchell Robinson, but with that Knicks second unit, and he showed that as a starter, he can be very productive. He's going to give the Knicks a slightly different type of a style of play offensively in his ability to also play make and potentially space the floor a little bit, so we'll see how that opens up potential driving lanes for R.J. Barrett and Julius Randle and Jalen Brunson. Then you have Jericho Sims. He's going to come in, hopefully provide a little bit more rim protection as well as rebounding. Now, if they feel like they are in a pinch there, could a potential Todd Gibson reunion with the Knicks be, be on the way? You have uh, other free agents out there like a Dwayne Dedman. You have a, a, a young player, although very risky, and a Kai Jones, who some of the fan base would like to look at. Uh, one of my targets via trade is, is Kelly Olynyk out in Utah. Utah Jazz have a very crowded front court. The Knicks will see Utah in just a couple of days as the first leg of their West Coast trip. Could a Kelly Olynyk, a guy who can space the floor, a free agent at the end of this season, can uh, help rebounds, has some chemistry with R.J. Barrett playing on that Canadian national team. Is he a potential candidate? We'll have to wait and see, but for right now, the Knicks will have to steady the, the ship with Isaiah Hartenstein and Jericho Sims. They're going to have to do that right now. Some interesting names you put out there. We'll see if the Knicks make any moves on that front at the center position. Now, you talked a little bit about the schedule, CP, coming up on Monday. The Knicks, they host the Raptors. They've lost two games in a row. How important is it for the Knicks to grab a home win before they head out west for five games? And what are the keys to them knocking off Toronto at MSG on Monday night? Very important, very important, because as I said, you have Toronto and then you have Utah, two teams under 500, and then it's a gauntlet after that. So you want to rip off as many wins as you can, as they've been doing. Take care of business. You're at home. You have a Toronto Raptors team that has been struggling to pick up wins. They're going to be looking for revenge against this Knicks team. So as the Knicks has said at the after their loss against the Boston Celtics, they've got to lead with their effort, their effort on the defensive end, running the Raptors off of the three-point line. They're going to have to get 
bang rebound now. Without Mitchell Robinson, it's going to take more more pressure on Julius Randle to rebound well. Their guards, R.J. Barrett, Isaiah Hartenstein, to rebound well as, as well. Um, no, I, Josh Hart, Isaiah Hartenstein as well from the center position. So they're going to have to rebound well and get back to their A game on the offensive end. Julius Randle, Jalen Brunson setting the tone, being the engine for that team, helping to play make, and then the supporting cast helping from there. You saw the the starting rotation change. We hope that Dante DiVincenzo can pick it back up from beyond the arc. Quentin Grimes certainly looked good in his role off the bench. I'd like to see Emmanuel quickly step it up a little bit. He kind of struggled against the Milwaukee Bucks and the Boston Celtics. So it's back to all hands on deck from here on out, especially with the loss of Mitchell Robinson. Yep, all hands on deck. Mitchell Robinson, once again, will be out at least eight weeks, could be up to 10 having ankle surgery later this week. We'll see how all that goes. Always on top of the Knicks is my guy, CP, the franchise. Check him out, Knicks Fan TV. Go check them out on YouTube. Hit the thumbs up button for your boys there. CP, always great to talk some Knicks hoops with you. We will talk soon, my man. Dexter, likewise. Anytime, man. Have a great one.